How are you going? And welcome to worship. Uh, on our journey through Advent, today we celebrate joy. Uh, Malcolm Stroud is going to share uh, a little about uh, the joy of Advent uh, in a moment. Uh, but before he does, let's open our service in prayer. Pray with me. Lord God, this time of year can come with a lot of pressure and stress. So as we come to celebrate your birth, we pray that you give us a renewed sense of joy. We thank you for Christmas and all it means and all the joy that comes with it. Bring us together as one by your Holy Spirit so that we can worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome. Hi, people. Uh, we are a congregation of believers who are close to only a week away from celebrating the birth of the one in whom we believe, Christ. And the word for this weekend is the name of somebody I know, actually, uh, joy. Joy. In the Old Testament, the word joy is nearly always associated with an act of God. And even more specifically, with an act of God delivering his people. Now, the people of Israel found themselves in need of God's deliverance on more than one occasion, as you may recall. When they were enslaved in Egypt, God sent them free. He set them free. As they traveled to the promised land, God proved to the Israelites over and again that he was far stronger and more powerful than the enemy nations who opposed them. And when the nation of Israel was carried off into captivity by the Babylonians, again, they cried out to God to rescue them. And God delivered them and brought them back to Jerusalem. Each time they were rescued, the Israelites were joyful and rejoiced in God's love for them. But each time they soon forgot God's deliverance and turned away from God. In a cold and dirty stable in the small, unimportant town of Bethlehem, God again delivered his people. This time, however, it was not just for a time, not just until the next warring nation came across the river, which could happen a bit. This time, this time, it was forever, for eternity. God sent his son to deliver his people, not just from enemies who threatened them, at the time, but from their sin that separated them from himself. Now we can imagine the joy on the faces of the shepherds as they made their way to the stable. We can almost see the joy in the faces of the wise men who traveled great distances to find this new king. Can you imagine how much joy they would have had uh, actually arriving at their destination and finding him? And we can Feel the radiant joy of Simeon and Anna in the temple as they came face to face with the Saviour of the world. God sent himself to us to bring us life and never-ending joy. Today, as we celebrate Advent and think of joy, let's not forget. Let's remember and live each day in the sure and certain knowledge and understanding of what God has done for us. We are delivered. How can we not be joyful? Let's pray. Father God, help us to be constantly joyful in your presence be constantly aware of the way that you care for us, to be constantly aware of the great um, gift that you've given us in the arrival of Jesus into the world and the absolutely amazing salvation that that represents to any soul who will turn to Christ. What joy there is there. Thank you for that. Help us to grow in that joy. Help us to share that joy. Help us to celebrate that joy. 
and help us to experience that joy during this season as we come closer to Christmas Day. Bless us, protect us, watch over us, we ask. And we ask it in Jesus' name and always for his glory. Amen. Go out there, people, and be joyful. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Malcolm. Let's light the candle of joy together. Now let's join together in singing with the Johnstons, O come all ye faithful. Let's sing together. Hello everybody. Let's all join together and sing, O come all ye faithful. Thank you, John Stuntz. Chris Woods, one of our members from Hanua Presbyterian Church, uh, has for us prayers this morning. Thank you, Chris. Kia ora koutou and season's greetings. I would like to share a prayer written by Father Richard Raw. Um, it's a prayer for our community. Let us pray. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for us all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our suffering world. Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer these prayers in your holy name. Amen. Notices. There's a few things in the newsletter for you to have a look at, but the one I really want to draw your attention to is that uh, David and Stel Arvidsson, uh, I want to congratulate them on the engagement of their daughter Alicia to uh, Neil and their son Perez um, to his now fiancé. I'm sorry, I don't know Prez's fiancé's name, but I do pray a blessing on all of you and in the coming months as you get things sorted for your wedding. So blessings to you both. Um, 
Estelle and David and to your children. Uh, reading uh, from the Jesus Storybook Bible this week, Tangi has a story for us again. And this week uh, we do again have the bingo sheets um, to go with the story uh, with the Christmas craft that Teresa will send out. Uh, if you do want them, um, you better get them in quick uh, before uh, it's Christmas already. Um, so yeah, play the bingo, uh, print the sheets and send them off to Teresa once you've filled them out and uh, get them in quick. Tangi. Good morning to all our Sunday school children as well as our um, church family this morning. Our story for this morning is called Get Ready. It is called Get Ready. Have you ever been to a party that lasted a whole week? How about a sermon that went on all day? Well, that's what happened to God's people after they came home from being slaves. They have forgotten how God wanted them to live or who they were supposed to be. So Ezra and Nehemiah read them the rules God had given Moses. But something odd happened. The more the sermon went on, the sadder they all got. Why? Was the sermon that boring? No, not really. It was strange, you see. As Ezra read the book of rules, it worked like a mirror. It showed them what they were like, and they didn't like what they saw. They saw that they had not been living the way they should. They saw that they were cruel and selfish. We're blowing it, they cried. Now God will punish us. They thought they knew what God was going to do, but they didn't. Of course, they might have picked a clue from Ezra's name, which means help us here. And an even stronger one from Nehemiah's name, because his name means God wipes away our tears. And that, as you will see, is just exactly what God was getting ready to do. Ezra looked at God's children. Great! Hot tears were welling up in their eyes and streaming down their cheeks. He stopped his sermon mid-sentence and shut the book. We're having a party, he shouted. And so, that's just what they did all week long. God wants us to be happy, Zera said. All day they listened to stories about the wonderful things God had done for his people. How he made the world. How he gave a special promise to Abraham. How he rescued them from slavery. How he spoke to Moses and showed them how to live. How he brought them to a special land. How he rescued them no matter what, time after time, over and over again. Because of his never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. They remembered how God had always, all through the years, been loving his children, keeping his promise to Abraham, taking care of them, forgiving them, even when they disobeyed, even when they ran away from him, even when they thought they didn't need him. Then God told his children something more. I can't stop loving you. 
You are my heart's treasure. But I lost you. Now I am coming back for you. I am like the sun that gently shines on you, chasing away darkness and fear and death. You'll be so happy. You'll be like little calves running free in an open field. I am going to send a messenger, the promised one, the one you have been waiting for, the rescuer. He is coming, so get ready. It had taken centuries for God's people to be ready, but now the time had almost come for the best part of God's plan. God himself was going to come, not to punish his people, but to rescue them. God was getting ready to wipe away every tear from every eye. And the true party was just about to begin. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how? How would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Thank you, Tangi. Before we go any further, I just want to pray for our offering. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for the huge abundance we have. We see that in the gifts that we give and receive at Christmas. And so, Lord, we gift you uh, money for your service, time for your service, food for your service, and all that we are for your service, Lord. And we pray your blessing upon the things that we give so that they may grow and, and draw people to, into your kingdom as well. So bless what we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we have our scripture reading, uh, let's sing again with the Johnstons. Uh, Angels have heard on high. Let's sing together. Thank you, Johnstons. 
This morning reading our scripture is Tangi Manuel. Thank you, Tangi. Kia ora na church. This morning we're reading from Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 55. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 55. Uh, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Saviour, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever. Again, thank you, Tangi. In sharing uh, a message this morning, uh, Joy Denby. Um, so I'll hand over to her. Thank you, Joy. Good morning. It's my pleasure to share God's word with you this morning. Before I start, let us pray. Loving God, I pray that you bless and speak through the words that I have prepared. They speak truth and give glory to who you are. I pray for all those who hear, that you open their ears and hearts so that as you they hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am too young. I'm terrified. The risk is so high. I am unworthy. I am overwhelmed. I'm not ready for this. I'm worried. What if no one believes me? What if Joseph doesn't believe me? She's a virgin. Yeah, right. Standing in the shoes of Mary. These are some of the words I could imagine coming from her mouth. Yet throughout this passage, she is called blessed by Elizabeth and refers to herself even as blessed. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour in the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now all generations will call me blessed. What she says is true. I think it is safe to say as a generation we do call Mary blessed. Although I find blessed a funny word, really. Who do we call blessed? When do we call ourselves blessed? I'm blessed because I have a wonderful family. I'm blessed because I have a roof over my head. I'm blessed because I have good health. Or sometimes we look over to someone calling them blessed with jealous eyes. They're so blessed to have such a nice car. Have you seen their house? They're so blessed to have it. They're so blessed to be able to go on these extravagant holidays every year. 
Mary is called blessed. Although being honest, in no way am I looking at Mary with jealous eyes and wishing I was in her place. I mean today, becoming pregnant before marriage is far more socially acceptable than back then. Although the real issue is Joseph, Mary's fiancé is not the father. It is expected that Joseph, in the knowledge that he is not the father, to assume the worst. Mary was unfaithful. If someone told you they had a miraculous virgin pregnancy, would you believe them? People would assume you're trying to cover up what really happened. That you got up to something, not even just jumping the gun before marriage because you couldn't wait. But with a man who was not even your fiance. As a young woman myself, but probably even now older than Mary would have been, what she is faced with are things of a worse nightmare. An, unplug an unplanned pregnancy out of wedlock without even being a natural consequence of what she did. We know that in fact she was a virgin. But who would believe it? Even today, many people will dismiss the story saying she just lied. She wasn't really a virgin. We all know there's only one way to get pregnant. This miracle is miraculous, but not one I would ever pray for to happen to me, at least not in the way it came to be. Well, at this point, Mary is unaware that she is going to give birth in a stable, the last place I think any woman would want to give birth. Now, I've never experienced pregnancy or giving birth, but from what I have heard, it is far from pleasant. Even today, with all the medicine that we have and giving birth in a center which was made for the very purpose of delivering babies, where there are trained professionals, it's still scary and unpleasant. And I cannot begin to comprehend what it would have been like for Mary. If I was Mary, I want to say that I would have the same response to sing the words she does of how blessed she is, praising God for who God is and all the great things God has done and is doing. It's a beautiful song she sings. But if I'm being honest, I think I would be inclined to call myself anything but blessed. I am stressed. I am worried. I am terrified. I'm overwhelmed. Would I be able to say I am blessed with the journey ahead of me that is long and daunting? Would I have offered God a song of praise? Or would I have been consumed by myself and only offered a lament, saying, God, I'm not ready, I can't do this. While it's not expressed in this passage, I am sure that Mary would have felt at least some of these emotions at some point. We know Mary to be human. Although what I find interesting and most beautiful in Mary's response is how aware she is of who God is and what God has done and what God is doing. She looks beyond herself. She's able to see the wider picture of what is happening and she praises God. Mary is not blessed because she has wonderful things or even a wonderful circumstance in the world's eyes. Mary is blessed because God has chosen to use her for something immensely important, the birth of Jesus. So call me blessed, 
not because of what I have, but who I am, a child of God. I am blessed because God looked at me, someone who is no one special in the eyes of this world. Yet I am God's child. God calls me his child and invites me to participate in growing God's kingdom. If we find our blessedness in who we are, we then have the ability to call ourselves blessed in any situation, even when we have little to nothing. Mary was blessed because of the part she had to play in this narrative. God was mindful of the humble state of the servant, called her, and she faithfully responded and did her part. We are blessed in the same way as we are God's children and we are called to participate in growing God's kingdom. Now we may not be called in the dramatic way that Mary was. We'll probably never be written or read about. And due to this, I think we can come pretty complacent. We easily fall into this trap of thinking that our actions don't really matter. At least not in the grand scheme of things. No one's paying special attention to me, writing down what I'm doing, and I'm not going to be read about for generations to come. People will probably forget my name. And thinking this way, and thinking we can't make a difference in the grand scheme of things that gets us noticed to be written about and read about, I think it leaves us being in the complacentness of, well, what I do doesn't really matter. There's a few important people, which it does, leave it to them. But what I do doesn't matter too much. So that really leaves you with the mentality of I can do what I want. I mean, within reason, of course, there's natural consequences, but not in the grand scheme of things, right? Although, if anyone has the power to make change in this world, I don't think it's one person, someone we would label important. It's God. And God chooses to use us, which means what we're called to do is of utmost importance. God calls us to participate, and well, it may not be in a dramatic way that will be written about, that does not negotiate, sorry, that does not negate the importance of our call to walk the Christian life, if you will, to live in a God-honoring way and what we do and the decisions we make really do matter. I am blessed. God has seen me, he loves me, and has called me to participate in this story. You are blessed. God has seen you, God loves you, and has called you to participate in this story. The way in which we participate may appear underwhelming in the world's eyes, but it doesn't mean these small actions do not matter. I believe that they do, and these small actions we do, God can use to do amazing things beyond our imagination which we will probably stay completely unaware of. But I believe, that I believe our part is to offer what we do have, to do our best and be faithful followers in even what we view as the smallest ways. Being patient to employees at the stores we are shopping at this Christmas. To give to others this Christmas joyfully and generously, not grumbling along the way about having to shop and how hard this person is to shop for, to love others without condition, to care for others, to actively listen. Leading up to Christmas, we have been talking about hope, peace, love and joy. 
and a huge part in participating in God, growing God's kingdom is embodying these things and sharing it with others and knowing how blessed we are to have these things and to have the ability to share them with others. To know how deeply and truly loved we are by our Saviour. To hear the birth of Jesus again this year and be able to sit in the knowledge of what, how loudly these actions speak to how loved we are. To have the peace we do. A peace which is about a wholeness and coming restoration and reconciliation. The certain hope that we have of what is to come. That we wait expectantly for Jesus to come back again and for the world we know to be restored to our God. To have this joy of knowing God, our God and Saviour. Not that feeling of happiness which comes and goes relying on our emotions and circumstances, but that deep joy of knowing God, which brings us the ability to praise God regardless of our circumstances. We have this joy, love, peace and hope. And we are to embody them and share them with all whom we meet. We are to know that we are blessed beyond our comprehension, not because of what we own or the state of the world, but because of our God, that he sees us, that he loves us, and that he calls us to participate and to follow him, which is not always easy, but we're blessed to do so. So call yourself blessed, not because your life is easy, not because you have all the things the world tells you you need, but because you are deeply and truly loved by God and invited to participate in this story and the growing of his kingdom. So you do not need to wait for something dramatic to happen, that now you can share this love, joy, hope and peace with all those who are around you. And may you know what a blessing it is to do so. Let us pray together. Loving God, we are so blessed by you in so many ways. But we thank you, the blessing it is to say that I am your child. To know the love you have for us and how blessed we are to be able to share you with others. We pray that um, this season of Christmas that we are able to offer those around us peace, hope, joy and love. And we may, know, may we know what a blessing it is to share these things with those around us, Lord. Help us live in a way that is glorifying to you. May we know the importance of our actions, of all that we say and do. And may we know that it's not in our own strength that we share these things with others, but in your strength that you offer us. To help us turn to you, to lean on you, and through that, that we can love others truly and deeply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all and blessings. To see us out this week, we have Jessica and Adam Jenkin with Joy to the World. Let's sing together. Let's sing Joy to the World. I'm lucky enough to have Adam come and join us and sing these carols with us this morning. Let's get into it.
now, church. If you would like prayer for anything, please touch base with me via email, by Facebook, or on the phone. Now, though, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go in peace.